turn it. I'll turn this way. Okay, back down, back down in street. If you go down three houses on the left hand side, you will see uh, the Japanese Buddhist temple. And in searching and doing research for this this tour, it's actually listed that Buddhist temple is actually listed on the National Park Service site as an endangered building. But across the street from us, and some of you know this already, where it says Hall Ambulance. That is the site of the Japanese American St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, or Methodist Church, Methodist Church. But it was called, that's why that when we were having the kids look for things, they couldn't find it at first. They could find it like in the 50s and 60s, but they finally found, I finally found it at the end of school yesterday, randomly found that it was built in 1916. And I'm, you got a picture of me in my classroom having frustration looking for stuff. I literally stood up and went, oh my God, I got it, I found it. Oh, oh. All right, life is good. So there's a photograph that I have that I use in my classroom, but it doesn't show up very well on this iPad. It's in the mid 1930s and it's pre-Eastern. There's a whole bunch of Japanese American kids standing out in front here before they go uh, Easter egg shopping. So during internment, both the Buddhist temple and this uh, church were used for storage as the families went to post in Arizona. The families in Kern County did not go to a pre-assembly camp like they did for, uh, like in the book, Farewell to Manzanar, or for the folks up in Tulare County or Fresno County. Kern County was unique in California. Everybody got to stay in their home. Now they had a curfew uh, and they couldn't travel very far but, and they couldn't leave because common sense says, well, you're gonna put me in internment camp. Can I go move to Colorado? And the answer was no, they couldn't even leave. So I'm, I've mentioned this before, but up in Delano, uh, Delano had a lot of Japanese Americans. They rented a barn and filled the barn up. And two weeks after they left for post and the barn was burnt to the ground. And the sheriff's office said that it was suspicious but no one was ever arrested for it. So let me read this on the, this is from the National Park Service site on the Buddhist church. The Buddhist church in Bakersfield is a one story clabbered structure. Double doors lead to a chapel area and the porch that leads to a hallway. Uh, the main room is a, I don't know what a tatami floor is, T-A-T-A-M-I? Okay. Covered by a canvas-like material in which the judo dojo practices. Uh, a screen toward the back of the room closes off the Buddhist altar. Walls are plastered, but the ceiling was a large main room, has been covered with plywood. So this must be today. The church altar, the oldest in the United States was disassembled and shipped to Bakersfield from Japan, then reassembled and installed in the church. So the magical question is, where's the altar? Is it still in there? Yeah. It's still in there? There we go. I love that. We got, we got, we got all the answers now. Uh, it is a fine example of the craftsmanship employed in construction of a religious altar without the use of nails. Uh, let's see, what else is here? Okay, the Bakersfield community of Japanese Americans that lived in this area numbered about 400. So if you're trying to picture, there were about a thousand Japanese Americans in Kern County and four of them, 400 of them lived in this area. And I was just telling someone over at the Larry Ryder Center that's, that's owned by KCSOS, there were four Japanese businesses that were right there in a row. Now yeah, let's see what else is going here. Uh, the first Japanese Americans to arrive in Bakersfield came in 1889, and I think it's 1885 that the Emperor of Japan releases Japanese to travel outside the country because it was a, a closed country. And the 60 laborers that first came to Kern County were hired by the Kern County Land Company to come here and, and work in the fields. And let's see what else we have. Enough Japanese laborers worked on the Santa Fe Rail Railroad to justify a construction of a labor camp. Taro on a Taro Onodero, O-N-O-D-E-R-A, was the supervisor and he had 40 workers working for the Santa Fe Railway. Um, by 1911, the Japanese lived in the vicinity of Chinatown and there were businesses, restaurants, three inns, four billiard parlors, that sounds like tenderloin action, Two barber shops, one Japanese restaurant, a bathhouse, and a store. And I know that there was a, a boarding house. So if you, I've mentioned this before, but over where Bonnie's Best is on F Street, 
the building that is directly north. One of the former students at Bakersfield High School told me his mom used to live, that was her boarding house. And when she was interned, she lost it. And then eventually it was moved over there and is used as a residential center now. And I mentioned this to when we were walking down here. Uh, his mother is probably the only adult you'll find that says she enjoyed internment because she worked every day. She cooked, she cleaned for the, all the boarders coming through because a lot of the Japanese couldn't stay in the regular hotels. And when she got interned, she didn't have to work anymore. And she had three years that someone cooked for her. So, what's it? I can't remember. I, it was in this area. I, I may have it written on an Excel spreadsheet in my classroom. Oh, all right. I would like those. We need those pictures. Let's take a ride on O Street. <laughs> 